Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to our session, Drupal SEO pitfalls and how to avoid them. Uh, so first, let's start a bit off with introducing ourselves. So I'm Brent Gees. I'm a Drupal developer and Drupal trainer at DropSolid in Ghent. And I was a speaker at various Drupal events like DrupalCon Amsterdam, uh, Lisbon, uh, Ghent, and also in February in DrupalCon London. Uh, I'll be giving the. I'm the a backend developer, uh, so I'll be giving the more backend uh, view of SEO, and I'll give the session together with my colleague Waters. Hey everyone, I'm Walter. Uh, I'm an SEO strategist and evangelist, also at Drop Solid, and I have been a speaker at multiple events, uh, of which also DrupalCon Amsterdam and Drupal Camp London. Yeah, so let's get started right away. Let's get started. So the first thing, um, public entities. What is what is the issue with public entities? Now, by default, uh, entities could be publicly available on their own unique URL. For example, if you have a team content type, then a team member could be uh, publicly available on their own page, while maybe they are only used for a team overview page. And for example, you don't have team detail pages. But Drupal might generate automatically the publicly available page, which is then on a node or on a taxonomy term URL. Now, this results in low value and thin content, as Google calls it. And these pages are indexable by Google. But you don't really want these pages uh, to be indexable because they are a waste of resources. Uh, when Google crawls your site, it will crawl a lot of uh, pages that are thin content, and that's not good for your crawl budget, and you're just wasting Google and everybody's time. Uh, luckily, the solution for this is very easy. Uh, you have to prevent people from accessing those entities. Uh, this can be done by a solution with rabbit hole. For example, the team content type. Uh, if you, someone visits a page of a, a team member uh, notes, you display a page not found. That way nobody can access it and the problem is solved. Okay. Uh, next up, all pages should be an entity. So oftentimes pages on uh, your website could be generated based on other content. And these pages are not really editable notes in the backend. For example, all of home pages are set up like this or overview pages could be set up like this again uh, as well. Now, when a page isn't editable as a node, um, for content editors in the Drupal CMS, there is no easy way to edit the meta tags. So like the meta title or the meta description, uh, or even to configure the XML sitemap inclusion settings for this page. So that's an issue. Luckily, there are two uh, very good solutions for this. Uh, one of the solutions is use the core Drupal layout builder to construct the home page or overview pages, like a news overview page that shows all news items, just use Layout Builder. And that way, the content editor can easily add uh, URL, uh, can change the URL path and add meta tags. The second solution for those who don't really like to use Layout Builder is to use paragraphs. Uh, you can use paragraphs together with a module like block fields or overview fields to add a view block to your page. That way, an editor can easily change the most things of the page while the overview is still automatically generated. OK, now we have a very short uh, question for you guys. And we'll give you some time to answer as well. And we'll come back uh, later uh, to this question. So a small quiz for you. Let's say you have a customer, uh, you have a website. And the customer noticed that a lot of his old pages, for example, he renewed his website, and he has a lot of old pages on his website, um, and he noticed they are still indexed by Google. Now, he would like to remove these pages from Google, but for some reason or another, he would like to keep them online on his website. Um, so for his visitors or for himself or for colleagues, just for reference. So he wants to remove URLs from his website for Google, he wants to de-index them, but still keep them on his website. Now we have three options. Um, what would you advise here? Would you block the pages or the subfolders using robots.txt, for example, by adding a line like disallow slash old blog? 
Or option B, would you add a robots meta tag uh, to all old pages and set this meta tag to no index? Or option C, uh, would you block using robots.txt and robots no index meta tag just to be sure? So you have three options. And the case is, the question is, how do you remove them from Google, but still keep them online for your website visitors? And I will put up a poll just now. So you should be able to see this poll right now. We'll give you 10 minutes, 15 minutes to answer, and we'll come back, uh, come back to it in about 10 minutes time. Next, let's talk about indexable internal search. Uh, so by default, uh, internal search result pages are usually indexable by search engines like Google. Um, this again results in low value and thin content pages, to, just like we talked about before. And you don't really want these pages in the index. Uh, Google also rather implicitly mentions this in its quality, quality guidelines. Do not let Googlebot index your internal website search results. Luckily, the solution is very easy if you use the normal pages for overview pages like we discussed uh, before by using the Alt Builder or using paragraphs. Uh, when you install the meta tag and meta tags, when you install the meta tag module, you can just edit the page and change the meta tags to prevent search engines from indexing and following links on this page. Uh, if you used an overview, uh, if you used a view page, then you can install the meta tags view module and do the same. It's a more, bit more difficult in that case, but it shouldn't be a big problem. So here you can see if you use a node just with the meta tags and edit those fields. Yeah, and so the reason for that is really that when people are searching something in Google, it's not a good user experience to end up on another search result page because Google has search results. And if you were to go to the page and you land on an indexable, uh, an indexed search results page, yeah, then you just see two search result pages right after each other. So that's the reasoning for Google why they don't want those pages in the index. Um, so next we'll talk about index text environments, uh, test environments and pages, sorry. So development and staging environments are also often crawlable and indexable by search engines um, by configuration issues or because of some developer laziness, maybe, who knows. Um, also temporary content is something that very often shows up in search results and it's also low value and thin content that we don't want in the index, of course. Um, I think everybody can agree that we don't want staging environments uh, live in Google uh, or paragraph testing pages. Uh, you can imagine if you have uh, a test test website running or a staging website running, uh, which has a, which is a web shop, uh, but it it contains production or uh, non-production URLs, so people can can finish their orders without paying. So that's not something you want. So you really want those uh, environments not to be indexed by Google. And these are just some screenshots of uh, development uh, environments that are indexed by Google. And it as you can see, it happens a lot. Uh, well, there are two solutions for this. Uh, the first is if you have test pages on live environments, environments, then you should unpublish them if possible. And if not, pos if not possible to unpublish, you should prevent Google from indexing them with the meta tag module. So as you can see, there's an option prevent search engines from indexing this page. When you enable that, you will disable Google from indexing that page. Uh, now, for complete test environments, like a dev or staging environment. Uh, just using the robots.txt isn't really enough. Uh, we tried it in the past as well, but we discovered it wasn't enough. Uh, so we advise to use HT password protection uh, to protect your environments from being indexed. And this is also a quite pretty secure method, since if you have an error on your website, nobody can see it, or if there's uh, an exploit, it will not be available. Yeah, and this last option is probably the best option um, as well, because let's say you, you do it using meta tags or sign up XML stuff. Um, you always have the chance when you uh, go live with your website that you forget to edit something and that your live website will be de-indexed or something. So that's not what you want as well. So using the HT password protection is really the way to go there. Uh, next up, let's talk about assets being blocked by robots.txt. So robots.txt, I think everybody will know this, is a, is a 
yeah, a piece of instruction for Google, um, considering uh, or about the crawlability of the website. And sometimes website assets like icons or images are located inside a folder by default in Drupal, and that folder is blocked for crawlers using the robots.txt. So I had a screenshot there of some directories that are, uh, or that can be blocked by Drupal, so a modules or a themes folder. Uh, now we want Google to understand our, our entire website and our entire page as a regular website visitor would see it. So when the Google crawler goes to a website, it loads all the assets um, or it goes to all the assets to see how does the page look like. But if some assets are blocked using robots.txt, then Google cannot view or render the page as it were, uh, as if it was a regular website visitor. So when we use Google Search Console to follow this up, we will see an error like the image on the right side that says the page is partially loaded and Google cannot entirely render the page um, as it is rendered for regular website visitors. So this is not a good idea because Google really wants to know how the page looks. And if you block certain things from Google to see, yeah, then Google can't really make up its mind, so to speak. So you should make sure that uh, all your website assets, all your images, all your icons, they should be in a publicly available folder and they should never be blocked by robots.txt. Uh, you can always keep an eye on the Google Search Console tool, which is a free tool uh, you can add to your website. You can keep an eye on that just to uh, make sure you don't receive notifications regarding blocked resources. Next, um, let's talk about some security leaks that could impact your SEO. Um, so if you have some form of public file uploads on your website, that could result in lower organic traffic when it's not set up correctly. Um, this is the case if files can be uploaded without some form of authentication uh, or a CAPTCHA. It could result in, in files, thousands of files even, being uploaded by spammers automatically and being indexed by Google. Um, the screenshot you see here is an example of a, of a site search in which we searched for torrents on a normal website. And as you can see, there were a lot of torrents uh, spammers on this website. Now, when Google notices this, uh, it might flag your website and it could punish you with a manual action. This again is a screenshot from Google Search Console. Uh, and this is a notification that there is an issue detected um, and it is a, a manual action. Now, manual action means that um, an employee of Google actively added a setting to your website or on your website to make it appear less in organic search results. And Google does this in rare cases, for example, when they notice that your website has a security issue, then they could spam it or could flag it with a manual action. So um, this is just the, the explanation from Google itself from support.google.com. Um, Google issues a manual action against the site when a human reviewer at Google has determined that pages on the site are not compliant with Google's Webmaster Quality Guidelines. So if a page has a manual action, some or all of that site will not be shown in the Google search results. So of course, this is something you want to avoid at all costs. Luckily, the solution for this is pretty simple. Uh, we've all seen the recapture I'm not a robot form. By using this, you can uh, yeah, protect your site a bit from spammers. Uh, it's most of the time not 100% uh, proof, but it helps quite a lot. Uh, we have two options, recapture and simple recapture. Um, we at DropSolid actually use simple recapture most of the times. Uh, recapture is the one that's most used. Uh, it also allows for Ajax forms, and it's perfectly fine if you use it on one contact page. Uh, but what you need to watch out for with this module is if you enable this on every page, it will disable caching on every page. So if you, for example, have the recapture and you use it for a uh, subscribe to our newsletter form that is shown on the bottom of every page, then your website will not be cached. Uh, so if you use it, watch out where you use it. Uh, we use simple recapture. It allows caching, uh, but it doesn't allow Ajax forms and is less used. Uh, so if you use Ajax forms, then recapture might be better. If you use captcha on a lot of pages, then we advise you to look at simple recapture. Uh, another solution is think when do you need to use private files and when do you need to use public files. Uh, for example, if you have a job site, 
and people will upload their resume, then you have to use private files. Since if you use public files, it's not only a security issue, but it's also a GDPR issue because people uploading their resume will be publicly available to everyone. So think about when do I need to use private or when I can I use private and when should I use public. 95% uh, of the time when you're creating a web form and you allow file uploads, it will be private. Yeah, okay. So let's get back to our uh, little question here. So the case was how do you de-index pages from Google, for example, pages from an old website, whilst keeping them on your site for reference. So you just want to remove them from the index. And I'm looking at the results here. We got some votes. 53% um, said uh, option B to add a robots meta tag to all old pages, set them to no index. 13% uh, of you guys chose option C, which is block uh, using robots.txt and a no index meta tag. And 33% of you said to block using the robots.txt. So the, the answers are a bit um, yeah, widespread, but the actual answer is option B. So you should add a robots meta tag to all old pages and set them to no index if you want Google to de-index pages. Uh, you do not want to do it using the robots.txt uh, for reasons we'll explain now. So the robots.txt disallow is not the same thing as a noindex instruction using a meta tag. Um, the robots.txt instructions only impact the crawling of Google and not the ind indexing, while the other way around, noindex directives using a meta tag will impact the indexing of your website or your pages, but not the crawling. So that sounds a bit weird, but Google is able to stumble, on, stumble upon pages um, using yeah, links on the internet, um, and they can index them even if they are blocked by robots.txt. When that happens, the result will be most likely be a snippet in uh, the search results that don't have a title or a description because Google isn't allowed to read the title or a description because you said to Google, you can't crawl this page. So Google found a link to this page, it will index it, but it can't crawl it, so it will, will not add a title to it. Um, you might say, well, Walter, um, I understand this could happen in theory, that a link is indexed, even though it's blocked um, by robots.txt, but you could wonder, do things like this really happen in day-to-day -day life or in practice? And yes, they really do. So as you can see here, we did a Google search for, um, in this case, the Drupal Gem website, um, and we found the URL our page uh, that, that says no information is available for this page. So that's what I'm talking about. Google is not allowed to crawl this page, so it doesn't have a description. So if we look at the robots.txt for the Drupal Gem website, all the way at the bottom, you will, you will see a, a disallow slash 2018. Um, so Drupal Gem probably tried to keep this page online, but remove it from the Google index. Um, but as we saw, just a minute ago, this rule doesn't keep Google from indexing it. It just keeps Google from calling, crawling it, and it's still in the index. And since Google can't crawl the page, even if they add an no index directive now, um, it will not be removed from the index because Google isn't allowed to read the page. So the solution in this case would be to remove this instruction from robots and add a robots no index tag. So never block pages using robots.txt and always set in the Windex directive using a meta tag if you want to keep pages out of the Google index. Uh, next, let's talk a bit about Google Analytics or Google Analytics Horror. So correct information and data is, of course, very important if you want to analyze your uh, search engine optimization efforts. Um, you should always pay close attention to sudden spikes and drops in Google Analytics because this will probably be a configuration issue. Uh, if you look at the following screenshot, we are looking at the users screenshot and you might think, oh, starting from January, um, that's uh, very good news because the users went way up. Um, but sadly in this case, uh, that was not the case. Um, so we saw that on that date, uh, a specific module was updated. Uh, it was the EU cookie compliance module and this resulted in each page view starting a new session as long as website visitors didn't accept the cookies. Um, so pages were counted multiple times uh, or sessions were counted multiple times even though it was just one session. 
Um, there's a possible fix for this. Uh, so solution one is that you anonymize the visitor IP address uh, using Google Analytics or GTM. So you can see the far left screenshot is the Google Analytics uh, setting you can use. Anonymize IP is true. Center screenshot is the GTM uh, setup. And then you also have to add the Google Analytics cookies to the whitelisted cookies in the EU cookie compliancy module in Drupal. This will fix the issue. There's also a second solution uh, that's more a dev approach. Uh, that solution is to update or patch the Google Analytics module to be more compliant with the EU cookie compl compliance uh, so that the snippet isn't loaded until approval was given. Uh, you can find a bit more information on the link uh, in, the in the slide. Uh, the big difference with this is that you will not track people uh, so until they have pressed the I'm OK to track my visit uh, button. So this will result in a lot less people on your Google Analytics because everyone has to click the button first, while the other solution will still track them, uh, but anonymized. Yeah, so whenever you update that module or you know something changed with the cookie module or, or uh, EU modules, things like that, always keep an eye, keep a close eye on your uh, Google Analytics. Uh, watch at the bounce rate, watch at the user count, uh, the new sessions count, things like that. If you see sudden spikes and drops, it's most likely a configuration issue. Uh, then let's talk about untranslated content. So. Uh, multilingual sites, when you have more than one language on your website, um, they should be translated 100% whenever that is possible. Um, if content is not translated, most likely Drupal will automatically show the content from the default language, and that is mostly uh, English. So this could result in English language content being shown on, for example, the French section of a website, because maybe uh, that part of the website was not translated, so English is shown. Now, that's not ideal for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it could scare away uh, non-English speakers, of course, um, but it could also confuse Googlebot, and that's not something you want. Uh, there are two solutions for it, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, this is one you have to discuss with your customer. If it's possible to just translate everything, then that is obviously what a client should do. But we understand that it's not always possible for every client to translate everything. So you can also deny access to untranslated pages by using the content language access module. That way you will not be able to visit untranslated pages. Yeah, so let's uh, end up here with some rapid fire best practices. So we will not go too much into detail, but we'll discuss a couple of uh, important things nonetheless. Uh, so you should always use uh, the Google Analytics module or the Google Tag Manager module to uh, set up your, your tracking like Google Analytics. But you should never or almost never use both um, because if you use both modules, it will make your tracking setup prone to errors, as you will see in the next screenshot, um, which is a screenshot of uh, the page use and the bounce rate. So the page use is the blue line. The light blue line is the bounce rate. And you can see that at a certain point in time, the page views doubled and the bounce rates almost went to zero. Um, now, this is just an issue of, of double tracking as well. Um, so double tracking caused inflate metrics for all page views uh, or all page view related information because Google Analytics was firing a page view event using the Google Analytics module, but also using the Google Tag Manager module. So when two page events are fired uh, on every page view, your bounce rate will be skewed, uh, your, your page count will be skewed, so all the information will be wrong. So in general, just use Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager, but not both. Second best practice is to always aggregate and minify your CSS and JS files. Uh, this can be done easily with a module called Adva. I think most people already know the module, but it's better to mention it. Yeah, it's also something that really speeds up your website, um, which is, of course, a very, very important uh, SEO um, thing to do just to speed up your website. Next up, just make sure also each page has a correct and well-configured canonical tag. 
Um, now, depending on the complexity of your website, you might want to let a specialist review the canonicals because there can be a lot of issues depending on your setup. Uh, and not all canonical tags are created equal, so to speak. So it's, it's very important to really have an SEO specialist take a look at your website um, if it's a complex one. Um, the next screenshot, uh, we'll see that there's a specific URL that is reachable using a node URL. I don't know if it's readable for you guys, but the canonical URL says drupalgem.nl slash nl slash node slash and then a number. Um, and a canonical URL is indicating to Google, like here, Google, this is the URL you should use in the Google index. But of course, this is not the URL you want in the index because it's a, it's a node URL. This shouldn't be something publicly available to anonymous users. So the canonical in this case should just be slash ticket registration. So there's definitely something fishy going on there. So pay attention to your canonicals. Um, always use absolute URLs. Always make sure your canonicals return a 200 status code, not a 301, not a 302. Uh, of course, not a 404. Um, and don't set a canonical to the, for example, the www version if that URL redirects to the non www version. So make sure each canonical is a status code 200. Now, also in most cases, you will want to omit URL parameters from the canonical. So for example, if you have a web shop and you can filter on price and that adds a, a parameter to the URL, you, in most cases, you want to remove that parameter from your canonical, but there are, yeah, there are exceptions where you want it to be added. Um, also a paging parameter, this is an issue we see a lot, a paging parameter should be added to your canonical. If you have a, a blog with 20 pages um, with uh, URL parameters for the paging, you want the canonical of each page to contain the page parameter because it is a unique page containing its own block items. So, so don't remove the paging parameter from canonicals. The next one is something obviously you should use part auto to generate nice URLs for your pages. And don't forget to translate the part auto uh, page uh, parts. That's something yeah, that's needed. Uh, this still happens. Uh, for example, the Belgium Post company still has this incorrect. And yeah, the Drupal gem also has this issue with not created uh, part auto. Yeah, this as well is a screenshot of uh, the English website, as you see here. So on the bottom right, you will see English text, but uh, the URL contains uh, slash nl slash sprekers, which is Dutch. So again, something fishy is uh, going on here in the back end. Uh, you should always follow up on the amount of pages indexed by Google. You can do this again using Google Search Console. This is a free tool. I highly suggest you use it. Um, and just keep an eye on the amount of pages that's indexed. Does it uh, seem too high, the amount of pages for your website? Then maybe there's uh, some rabbit hole setup needed to remove separate pages from the index. Or if Google indexed less pages than you would imagine it to index, then maybe some important pages are set to no index. Uh, so, so you can keep an eye on this count using uh, Google Search Console. Uh, the next one, make sure your base URL is not HTTP default in your sitemap XML. Uh, there are two solutions for this. Uh, the first one is setting the correct line in your settings.php file, or the second one is using a correct rush cron job. Uh, also a tip, try to make your website as fast as possible. Uh, use the available tools, the default Drupal caching, Varnish, Mem, Cache, Red Redis, all tools that speed up your website are good because Google still watches the speed of websites. I don't know if you have much time left for questions, uh, but if there are questions, uh, you can always meet us at the Dropsolid booth. We'll be available there for questions and for some other extra tips that we didn't uh, get into this website in this uh, conversation. So be sure to visit at the Drop Solid booth. Yes. Yeah, maybe maybe we can go over one or two yes, questions. Yes, thank you, Brent um, Walter, for the very interesting presentation. We learned a lot of uh, tips. I saw Furfin had a question. Um, do you have any tips on how to tackle all canonicals? Um, yeah, so, do, so to quickly check all canonicals, um, 
Yeah, I would I would suggest using a, some sort of crawler to crawl all your, all your pages. Um, so the, one of the famous ones is a screaming frog, uh, screaming frog SEO spider that is. And if you have a small website, uh, meaning less than 500 pages, uh, you can just use all options from that tool. Uh, if you have a big website, you will need a license. But that tool um, makes it possible to crawl your website as Google would crawl your website. And then you can have a list of all your URLs, um, that are complete paths, and the canonical tag that's added on that page. So you could just export that in an Excel and just go through it and see if all canonicals are correct. Or if you see some page, uh, some page pages are missing uh, the page parameter from a canonical, for example. So I don't think there is software that will automatically check to see if it's a correct, so to speak, canonical. Um, but if you know what you're looking for and you have a list of all your URLs and their respective canonicals, then I think you can, uh, you can quickly find possible issues. I don't know if that answers your question. And for the quick question, okay. the exit pass works with the shield module. That's certainly an option. Uh, you can use shield module or you can do it with the HD access if you're uh, familiar with that. That's the question I saw as well from Firfin. Okay. Uh, so I guess we'll move now to the drop solid booth. So if there are extra questions, everyone is free to ask them, uh, some questions over there. Yes. So. Thank yeah, you. welcome to join yes, us, indeed. and thanks, thanks everybody. Okay.